Hey Nate here and today we're going to be covering something a little more different I guess you could say and for a little bit more advanced and time consuming stuff. Um, now for this tutorial, part of it you will need CS5. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start out with the non-CS5 stuff so that way the people without CS5 can skip through. I mean can just watch this part and you know then they can stop watching it or you can watch the whole thing and see what you're missing out with C5, CS5. Um, so today's tutorial will be basic rotoscoping and we'll be introducing the tool the roto brush with CS5. Not available in CS4, but yeah. Okay, so we're going to drag this footage. It's really f it's really quick. It's I tried, you know, editing video on my camera itself, which you can do somehow. I did it. But um yeah. It's just better to do it in After Effects to me. Okay, so we have some pretty long footage. We're not going to do the whole thing, but we're going to introduce rotoscoping. Now, rotoscoping is one of the most time-consuming things in the entire editing business. That's what masking tools come in handy for, for wasting your time. All right, so basic idea is obviously a mask cuts out part of the footage. We can change it to subtract. We can do lots of different things with it but what if we wanted to create um, a kind of a green screen or blue screen effect but we don't have a green screen or a blue screen well um, this is where masks and time consuming comes in handy what I'm going to do I'm going to cut around our guy which is m me of course but uh, click on our footage pen tool and Believe me, this is one of the most time-consuming things you'll ever learn. But sometimes you don't ha really have a choice. Now, obviously this is going to be a lot less accurate than using a blue screen or a green screen. Uh, this is the hard... Me I mean, if you want this to look just like a green screen or blue screen, you better be prepared to spend months at a time depending on how long the footage is I mean the footage is like five seconds be prepared to spend uh, I guess if you spent like ten hours a day you could get it done in about a week um, it just depends I mean, you can get good at this you know but see I just talk to you while I make masks that's so fun not okay now for the fun part Okay, so we've got our character cut out, and instantly, you know, we got like a blue screen effect. Very simple, obviously. It's not perfect. Um, instantly, though, I'm gonna actually I'll do it after. We're gonna go to MM and we'll keyframe the mask path. Now here's the fun part. We're gonna select here. Um, now, if you you can you can move the whole mask by selecting the mask button itself. Um, but if you if you just click on this your footage, you can move every point. Sometimes you might need that. Sometimes you might not. So um, we'll go to the next frame, and you can see he moves. Obviously, we don't have to move every point in this case. Luckily, um, we keep moving it. And sometimes, if you're luck, if you're not very lucky, which will happen most of the time, um, your body parts will move, and you'll have to go in. And kind of like right now, I'm gonna go in and just move these individual parts. You just kind of, kind of watch it the whole time. So obviously, this is very time-consuming. I mean, this is kind of an easy shot, but if there's action involved, instead of me just kind of moving it just a little bit, then it's gonna take you a lot longer. And I recommend setting a keyframe for each frame otherwise you may run into some problems if you try and take some shortcuts and again you're going to want to move a few extra points here and this is so fun isn't it see we already started getting off this is what makes this so terrible we already cut him off pretty much but this is just for example purposes it's not for anything fancy and tell you what I'll just do one second really fast I'll just I'm not gonna really move the points at all 
There's some times where you're going to have to make obscure masks, which I might go over in another tutorial. Just recommend it on my comments if you think I should do obscure masks or mats, whatever you want to call them. Um, just, yeah, put a comment in if you want a tutorial for that. Um, I will make a tutorial for that, but uh, sometimes rotoscoping is very easy. Very, very easy. And that's nice sometimes. Okay, so now we have our very cheap representation of a blue or green screen effect. And um, I'll get just a random picture. Got a lot of random pictures. How about this? A 4K Jupiter map. That's cool. So when you want to make a 3D plate, this is huge actually. So, um, I believe the control. Uh, the shortcut for fitting to comp is Control Alt F. Yep, there we go. And here we have our very cheap effect of. You can see it actually looks pretty good, other than the bad parts. But you know, we kind of have our own little sc blue screen and green screen effect. All right, now for the CS5 part. Now uh, stay tuned if you want to learn about this because it is quite awesome. It's like seriously the best tool ever. If we click this roto brush tool, it's quite amazing. To use it, we just double click on our footage and click the roto brush. What we want to do, you can hold down Alt and you can just click. When it's green, that's the areas we want to uh, kind of mask out, I guess. So we could draw a shape, a basic shape right there, and we already get something cool. And then we can draw around the rest of us. So I like to do simple shots like this to do this. Because sometimes it can get pretty complicated. And there's a little spot in the ear I want to get. Okay, so that's relatively good. Now, if we were to render this right now, all I have to do is press the space bar. But what I want to do is when you alt click it turns red this is the areas we don't want so i'm going to increase the brush size by holding on control f or just sorry excuse me control click and dragging left and right um and i'm going to hold down alt and paint around the areas that i want to tell it not to use okay so now if we press the space bar it will render frame by frame and we're obviously going to get a few little problems which if we go back and fix right now actually then it will fix it for later now we're just going to be going over the basics we're going to go over a few of these but not all of them um, that's kind of I'm going to let you guys play around with that yourself um, because, you know, it just depends on your footage of what uh, options you're going to use. Okay, so clearly we already are going much faster. Obviously we haven't seen effect yet of it, but we're going much faster than the other one of actually moving each little point sometimes. Um, this point, this part right here keeps wanting to do that. So pretty much in no time at all, we're going to have pretty epic, not epic, pretty cool effects. I think the reason it keeps getting messed up over here is because of the shading. It's really dark over here. The light's coming from over here. So it's kind of mistaking some of the, these pixels for the background because they're similar colors. If you didn't get that, you're fine. Just keep fixing it. And we're almost there. I've actually done five minute or five second footage of this in about ten minutes, and it was very complicated footage, and I did it professionally, pretty much. Okay, almost there, and we're good. All right, so obviously there's a few little fixes in there I might want to make. Otherwise, it might look kind of fake. Um, I guess it, it kind of sometimes if you move one point, you gotta, I mean, if you fi go back and fix something, it's gotta fix it for the whole thing, 
So I'm just gonna go back through really fast. Sorry about this. But we're gonna be going over the invert back foreground, background, smooth feather, choke, and we could go over refined map, but you know, sometimes that gets a little advanced. Of course, once again, if you want the certain tutorial more of what I'm teaching you then just request it. Okay, I'm sorry, this is taking forever, but look on the bright side. We're not rotoscoping. Okay, we'll call that good. So, now we have pretty good stuff. Pretty good. And so now we're going to go over some of the options that are available. And we can smooth it out, which is already set to somewhat smooth. We don't want to set it too smooth, otherwise it will get some weird stuff. Feathering is just how soft the edges are, and choke is if we want to bring it in. So to s check this out, just go back into your comp. You can see, pretty cool. Background is transparent. If we want to fix our edges, of course, we can feather more. We can choke if we want. Um, I'll go into the refine mat, I guess. Um, hang on. So, the fine map. Basically, I'm going to go over a few things, and that is just basically reduced chatter. The chatter is kind of how much the stuff is doing. It's hard to explain. But if you just mess around with the settings, you'll get some good results. Then we put our Jupiter picture in the background. And instantly, in about. Um, a lot less time than it would actually take to make this look good with rotoscoping. We have the same effect, but it looks completely real. I mean, I don't think it was going to turn out this good. Um. So yeah, that's actually quite good. Take a look at it now. Look at that. You've got no bad edges or anything. That's pretty sweet, I think. Um, obviously this took, what, five minutes to make it perfect for this amount of time, if that, not even five probably. So you can see the possibilities with CS5, it's worth getting, just f even though if it's for a tool, I mean, you, the only difference is you have to have a 64-bit system to run it, um, take that in mind. But, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and, um, I'll be later posting some more tutorials, uh, probably about color correction and stuff like that. So thanks for watching, please rate, comment, and subscribe.